Magenta Horizon is criminally fun. Being developed by one man by the name of Madison B, it's currently not finished yet, but there's a demo on Steam with the full first act, which is still like 3 hours of gameplay, so he had his work cut out for himself. It's a 2D hack and slash where you absolutely dominate your opponents anytime they don't have you stuck in the corner with a stun lock. I'm not usually a fan of these extremely high risk and good enough for word types of games because my reflexes are as sharp as marshmallows and as quick as bricks. But Magenta Horizon has a really addictive gameplay loop that just kept me coming back for more. And like any good abusive relationship, it hurt me in all the best ways. This game is ball bustingly difficult and it is not afraid to show its true colours. Which is Magenta of course. Full disclosure, I will be spoiling the entire first act in this video. It's free, so you might as well go play it. And for anyone who doesn't have a PC, I'm sorry. So our story begins with this old Scottish hermit named Archibald coming across an old tomb and deciding to open it. Inside said tomb is our main protagonist, Gretel. She's some sort of cloaked owl demon thing? Her design is really sick, I really love what they did with her eyes. But Archie thinks Gretel's a demon that's gonna kill him, so our first objective is to hunt him down and get some answers. Your main weapon is a scythe. And like most beat em ups, you have a light and heavy attack that can be strung together to create deadly combos. That's the nice way of saying that I spent the entire game mashing triangles to slam my scythe into the skulls of these sinners because light attacks are for smart people. And pussies. The combat somehow feels familiar yet foreign at the same time. I haven't played a game that controls like this. But then again, I haven't played many popular indie games at all. It controls like heaven though and feels smooth as butter to juggle enemies into any combo even if it's super simple. For reference, I played on DualShock 4. I'm not sure how it controls on keyboard, but I can imagine it would be any worse. After the end of every fight, Gretel will comment on it with a short and snappy play. There is an option to turn this off in the settings for people who hate fun, but it only made me go even more tryhard so I could hear her say my favourite line. Good boy. Now play dead. <coughs> But we eventually catch up to Archie and he is bored by this massive plant looking monster, and thus begins the first boss fight. It's easy enough, just whack it till it runs away. Staying aerial helps with dodging and pogoing with your scythe. This boss falls under the trap of most first bosses in games, which is just being a punchy bag for like 5 minutes. I still really enjoyed it with the stylish gameplay that's offered here, but I would have definitely preferred if it was a bit more challenging. This goes for all bosses, bar one. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. After saving Archie, the two have a short and cute exchange where we learn that this is the land of the dead. More specifically, Hell. And it's Gretel's job to guide lost souls back to the nicer part of Hell. The cutscenes aren't voiced yet, probably due to the story not being finalised as of now, but a lot of the in-game comments are. And for who's there, I gotta say they do a great job. Archie's does a fantastic job sounding like a friendly old trader, but Gretel's just kills it for me, dude. Now at the beginning of stages, we can buy a growing variety of goods from Archibald, including necklaces that give small buffs to Gretel, and different ranged weapons. Now, ranged weapons are basically mandatory to win in this game. I glossed over them earlier, but that's because I'll go more in depth with them in my Act 2 video, when there's more, because at the minute there's only four of them, and there's still a lot to play with, but Madison is planning on adding a lot. Don't worry about money by the way, if you play any bit decently you'll be swimming in cash. Trucking on through the catacombs, there's not much to talk about here except for the growing enemy roster. Like these smaller plant things that shoot reflectable projectiles at you than burrow underground. Or these massive wasp dickheads who do so much damage and refuse to die no matter how many times you ram your sights straight into their stupid skulls! There's also the secret area found in one of these levels, which you can get to by climbing up this narrow shaft. And it's obvious that the developer wants you to fight these waves of drones in cool and innovative ways. But I just found that no one can withstand the forgotten heirs of Pogo. Yeah, Pogoing is very useful for like the entire game. And it's honestly a little too good in some areas. That is until the final boss of the demo where it's basically mandatory, but I'm getting ahead of myself again. Boss 2, the old Wraith, is a lot more fun because he doesn't run away, and instead you fight him in the small arena boarded off with stalactites, and by god, they stalact bite. He's definitely more of a toughie than the first and a fun punching bag to come back to in later tools. 
In fact, I'd probably say that this guy's my favourite boss since he's so simple and yet tough. Well, afterwards, it's just more of the same killing and exploring for a while until... That's right, baby. A motherfucking train level. Yeah! And what a level it is. Stage 3 2 slaps, dude. The aesthetics, the jazz swing, the fights, not you. The platforming. Oh! It all comes together to make the most fun level in the demo. And it ends with a banger boss fight too, where you fight the front of the train itself. This is the developer's favourite fight, and presumably the character since he shows him off a ton and I don't blame him. This is where I got my massive Alice in Wonderland vibes from too. Something about how Blucher, the train, is drawn just hits me with Alice vibes. The reason we're fighting the train is because at the beginning of the level we found the old train in the back carriage who tells us that if we can beat the soul out of the new train, that he can take it over and drive us to where we need to go. So you do so, and then it's on to the final act. Stage 3-2 is by and far my favourite part of this demo, and I really hope Madison can live up to it. Or at least do more jazz themes, because this one slaps. Second last stop in the demo is Stage 4-1. This is the longest part of the game for me. It took me like 30 minutes of my first run, but it's still a lot of fun. This stage just introduces these hermit crab enemies who block your attacks but you just have to grab them to pull their gear out of them, which is a nice little mix-up. What isn't nice is these fucking dolphins. These are the single most annoying enemies in the entire game. They hit like freight trains and move as fast as them too. It's hard to describe the anger that they make me feel, so you'll just have to play to feel it for yourself. The point of this stage is for Gretel to find lost souls and guide them home, as I mentioned earlier. The first of which is this old granny who just kind of died while walking someday. The second is the chef's whose only regret is never finishing his final dish. Which, I feel you man. I too am a master cook. And lastly is this drugged out psychedelic dude who took too much gas station meat and fucking died. And this ledge above him doesn't seem to be blocked off though. I wonder what's up here. That's right, you get to fight the Doom Ranger from Daikatana, and it's a damn fun fight too. It's mostly just wailing on V1 till he dies like the other bosses, but he's just a jittery bastard as you, and he'll constantly be dodging and jumping to get out of your way. Although when it's all said and done, you get a hefty reward of money and an achievement to boot. What isn't fun though, is that this secret fight kicks you back to the beginning of the level, where you have to restart the entirety of 4-1 from the very beginning. Why is this a feature? Why can't it just kick you out where you go in? It just bloated the runtime for me on my first playthrough, and I didn't do the fight in my second because of this one reason. I honestly don't know why this is in the game and why it hasn't been changed yet, it just kinda kills the pace. Either way, the end of the stage is just below the psychedelic dude, and it's on to the final part of the game. This stage is the final lost soul at the very beginning, which is just a grieving woman. We give her a pat on the back and a thumbs up, then move on to the first fight. Oh, you gotta be shitting me. Yeah, this fight is fairly difficult, but it gets easier if you just focus on the big guy first, then the dolphin when it's alone. Unfortunately, Gretel never came in the sink, so she's since in the common. We get a bit of backstory here. Gretel's death was caused by none other but the Salem Witch Trials, where she was too smart, and all the villagers thought she was a witch, so she got burned alive. Seems like a good solution to me. She gets herself off the stake, and we confront the final boss of the demo. Well, I mentioned earlier how the dolphin was a pain in my ass. Well, that means the priest is the biggest hemorrhoid of them all, since this bastard can only be hit in his upper torso and spawns in a ton, and I mean a ton, of filler enemies. This boss is hard. Very, very difficult. These enemies are annoying as shit with their pitchfork attacks, and they will try their damnedest to poke you out of the air as you desperately try to juggle yourself on top of the priest's head. The healing you get here is also non-existent, as the filler demons give you pathetic health and the priest is such a pain to hit in the first place. The only upside to this entire fight is getting to see Gretel with her mask off. She still has that cool eye thing now, but now we know it's because of 4th degree burns, which makes it a little less cool, but still cool. Eventually I killed him, and then it was onto the epilogue. You get to walk around the train carriage for a bit and talk to all the lost souls that you rescued, which is cute, and I won't spoil it here. Gretel still has her mask off, saying that she needs some air, and I'll keep it real. I didn't know that the owl face was a mask until she took it off, but now we know that she's a cutie. A horribly burnt cutie, but a cutie nonetheless. The very last conversation is with Blucher, where he tells Gretel that it will be a while until they get to their destination. It feels like a cute little nod from the developer to the fans, saying the game development's gonna take a minute. And that's Magenta Horizon Act 1, short and sweet. It's a phenomenal game that even if you watch this fair, I still highly recommend you go and play. I can't wait for Act 2. Seriously, I had nothing to look forward to game-wise the last year, but in spring of 2023, I'm getting Yakuza, Ishin, and Magenta Horizon, and you will guess. Now, I'm super excited to see what this madman takes us next. In fact, I guess you could say that I'm along for the ride. <laughs> oh, just shoot me on the really.